What is going on everybody? My name is Michael Levan, and in this video what I want to do is I want to show you how to install Kubeflow. And if you're not familiar with Kubeflow, Kubeflow is a way to run machine learning and AI workloads on Kubernetes. So for example, if I build data sets, if I want to build models, if I maybe write some Python code to build and generate a model for me, what I can do is I can run that whole process in Kubeflow. So I can create the experiments, I can put the models in, I can do the run, so I automate the model creation. And again, I can do all that in Kubernetes. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that whole process looks like. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do here is we're gonna make sure that we have a Kubernetes cluster up and running, operational, functional, all that jazz, okay? And we can see here, I'm on an EKS cluster. It doesn't matter what kind of cluster you're on. The biggest thing that matters is the resources that are available on that cluster. One thing I wanted to point out here really quick, I have some prerequisites in a blog post that I wrote. You want a Kubernetes cluster running, at least version 1.27 or above, 32 gigs of RAM, and 16 CPU cores. Yes, running ML and AI workloads uh, take a lot of resources, regardless of if you're running on Kubernetes or not. You can use less resources on Kubernetes because you're not just feeding them into one VM. You can actually decouple them into various pods, hence why containers are so popular to begin with. Uh, but you still need a properly running Kubernetes cluster with the right requirements from a hardware perspective, primarily around CPU and memory. Okay, So the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to clone this repo down. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to CD into AI and ML Kubeflow. And I already have the manifest directory here, but you probably don't, so you can go ahead and run that. Next, you're gonna CD into manifest, and you're gonna check out the latest version. The version with hyphen branch is more of like a, I don't know, development beta style branch, and then the one with the standard version is the prod branch, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna check that one out, all right, boom, I was actually already in it, so no big deal. And then after that, we're gonna run the customized configuration for the manifest. Now, there are a couple of different installation options. If I just go to the documentation here, and I go to Kubeflow, get started, installing, you're gonna see standalone and Kubeflow pattern now, or platform, not pattern. <laughs> now notice here, standalone components, okay? And then you're gonna have installation options for various clouds, okay? So you could either go this route or you could do the vanilla installation. I personally recommend the vanilla installation because it works everywhere versus doing it for particular clouds. But on the flip side, you may have a particular thing that you wanna deploy on a particular cloud. So if I go to AWS, Notice here, we can do things around load balancers, around CloudWatch, Prometheus, and these are configurations specifically for Kubeflow on AWS, okay? So it's all gonna depend, but just to get started, it's gonna be better to just use the standalone installation. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this command here, paste it in. It's literally just doing a loop, and the reason why, well, my assumption the reason why is because there are some race conditions, so some Kubernetes workflows come up before others, those others are needed, so a retry is, is necessary. That way, once the container is up, then you can move forward. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna let that run, and yeah, it could take a couple of minutes or so to get this whole thing to actually run. All right, that installation is now complete. If we go ahead and just run kubectl get ns, we should see a namespace here, actually a couple. We got a kubeflow one here, so kubectl, get pods namespace kubeflow, okay? And as we can see, everything appears to be good. And this, these are where, you know, the, the race conditions, I believe, I, I'm assuming that's the, the reason that we see here for all the restarts because some containers need to come up before others, but the flow isn't there, so it needs to kind of restart until the endpoint is ready. Okie dokie, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a port forward on the ingress gateway. Okay, perfect. And then let me head over to a web browser. This is the default email address. 
and then the password is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now, of course, you're gonna to wanna to change that. It's all based on namespacing. As you can see here, you got Kubeflow user example, but you can also create different namespaces and that will house other people. It's a multi-tenancy environment, okay? But that's it, that's the gist. Kubeflow is up and operational. We, of course, don't see anything in here because we didn't do anything, <laughs> but this is a good starting point to get your environment configured.